J right in your face. Welcome back to the Fadeaway Podcast, episode number 33. The crowning of a new NBA champion. Finally. This podcast is brought to you by the Ball is Life Podcast Network. I'm your host, Fatty. I got Zaid here with me. Zaid, how you doing today, man? Good, I'm good, good. Nice sunshine. It's hot. It's a hot day today. It's a hot man. day today. It's a hot it's, day it was today. a hot weekend. Yeah. And it was a hot last couple weeks. Yes. But not because of the Phoenix Suns, baby. The Milwaukee Ooh. Bucks. Are the 2021 NBA champions? 2021 NBA champions. Shout out to the Milwaukee Bucks. Shout out to Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, and Giannis. most importantly, Giannis Antetokounmpo, who we'll talk a lot about today. Um, I guess uh, let's start off with just talking about your your weekend, man. How was your weekend? And uh, I didn't really see you at all this weekend. I didn't so see. Yeah, you were you were you were you were mad busy this weekend. <laughs> Celebrating like love, a, man. A bit of a popular guy this weekend, so I was just on my own, chilling mm. on my own, doing my own thing. Went to our softball game. We slapped again. Yeah. Uh, shout out. Slapped, shout out to our team. We slapped again. Um, shout out uh, to Shady, man. <laughs> go. <laughs> Probably. Go. Probably should ask if, if I can mention his name, but I won't say his <laughs> last name, so they don't know who it is. Um, but yeah, we picked up another win, in case you didn't know. Um, really good game. It, I will say, though, since you weren't there, it, it's sometimes it's not that I want anyone not to come to softball. I would love to have a full team. It just feels amazing to be able to bat every single inning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you, softball is a slow game. You don't get to bat every inning. Maybe every, if you're lucky, every other inning. And yeah, if you have a full team, you sit off on defense. You, you know, once in a while, whatever. But when there's just a perfect amount, like was it nine people? You bat every inning. You defend every inning, and it's like you're actually playing a sport. Mm-hmm. Honestly, if I could, I would give up my uh, my batting rights. I'm not a big fan. You could. I think I have to. If you like, if you could. No, I think league rules. I have to. Like everyone on the on has the, to bat on the rotation has to bat. Oh, yeah, damn it! I mean, I we know injured. certain people don't follow the rules, but <laughs> our team captain is uh, a stickler for the is rules. by the yeah, book, so I uh, definitely gotta gotta follow that. If anything, he's by th- like the two point book. <laughs> Always trying to refine the rules, but yeah. shout outs to to him. He's in Mexico right now, enjoying, enjoying the sun. He so. also wasn't here, which was great. Thank you for not coming. Yeah, I got to play a lot more. <laughs> I got to run a lot more. I got to, you know, break a sweat. It was good. It was fun, though. But how was yeah. your weekend? How you were you were busy? Yeah, yeah. It was busy, man. Celebrating love. Like I said earlier, I had a couple weddings. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it was nice. Uh, Saturday night, it was a, It was in a tent. It was like the biggest. It was like the cruise ships of tents. <laughs> like, I've never seen a tent that big in my life, but it felt like I was inside. But, yeah, man, it was nice. Uh, busy. Congrats pricey. to all the couples. Pricey, pricey. weekend. Ooh, yeah. yeah, congrats man. to all the couples for yeah. sure. Yeah. I, actually, Saturday night, I witnessed the best uh, best man speech of all time. Nice, I appreciate that. Shout That's out to great. him. I think his name is Tony. Maybe you Tony. better get it right. He, Tony. <laughs> his name is Tony. He made it. He made a little punchline joke. But yeah, no, it was good, man. Uh, it was good. It was nice to uh, celebrate. It was nice to talk to to people and see people because uh, you know with COVID while. and everything. Yeah. And it seems that you know every time people see me or see us, the number one topic is basketball. What did you think of the year? Of course. Uh, so I got a lot. A lot to say about, you know, the last game, I guess. So uh, let's talk game six because... Stressful, man. The Milwaukee Bucks handled business, obviously. But I felt in those last four games that the Milwaukee Bucks figured it out. They, f- they unlocked the unstoppableness, the unguardableness yeah. in their style of play. What did you see in those last few games? Uh, I guess, actually, you know what? Let's just stick to the last game. Because game, game six, okay. I think, is the one that we didn't talk about. Yeah. And first of all, obviously Giannis was the man of the hour. 50-piece. Talk to me about that game. We watched it together. Talk yes. to me about that game, what you saw from Giannis, and you know, I mean, leading when, up to, to having a 50-piece, like when you said. Just even before the game started, you kind of knew there were signs there that the Bucks were taking in that night. Because it... it Everything was against the Suns. I mean, you talk about Scott Foster refing that game. That, you know, a big, you know, slap in the face, little F you to Chris Paul. Uh, you talk about, you know, Milwaukee's momentum winning the last three games in a row. They've got all the momentum. They've got all the confidence. Suns, you know, you, 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 you've mentioned a lot about their, their youth, their, uh, you know, the mentality, the mindset. Uh, not being in this situation before, that, does that have an effect? It seems like it does, and it seemed like it did have an effect on them. Um, you also talk about the adjustment. I mean, 
I know we make fun of Coach Barala by not making adjustments, but he kind of made pretty much just one, and it, it's just the lineup that he had. No, he made a handful. He made a bunch um, of defensive that was, adjustments. Yeah, a bunch of, there was a bunch of defensive adjustments, but that was kind of that lineup he had with, you know, um, with Brooke. I believe it was Brooke, Giannis, Portis, and, uh, Portis and Chris. A fat lineup. And I think, obviously, Drew at the one. We know that. But uh, just a, a lineup of just big dudes. And we haven't seen bigs or big players or big lineups dominate the game like the Bucks did and the, like, like they did the whole series, really, or the last four games of the series. So, you know, we, we joke about Coach Bond not making adjustments. It seemed like he did. Uh, and he did make those adjustments. But in that game six, Milwaukee just looked confident. Like, what you saw Giannis do and how you saw Giannis come out is what we wanted to see the book come out as and what we wanted to see CP come out as. That attitude, like, yo, I'm winning today. This is it. This is the game. We're not celebrating. We're going to we're gonna end it. We're going to close it tonight, and then we'll celebrate. That was the attitude he had. Um, they just – they played so well together defensively. It, it, the last – I mean, I hate to say the last four games, whatever. I know we want to focus on game six, but – the Suns offense constantly looked like they were in disarray if they didn't have CP and Deepak on the floor together. And even Aiton, Aiton, they created a mismatch with Aiton and Giannis. They put they would also put Giannis to the five and make Aiton guard him. And Aiton can't guard him because we talk about Giannis having that extended game from Shaq where he can put the ball on the floor from the three-point line and drive in and get by you and wiggle by you and, and stretch his long arms and get to the basket. Spin, Spin footwork. Whatever it may be, right? So although the score isn't dominant, um, the shooting wasn't dominant by the Bucks. They did the right things, and they constantly did the right things. The Suns had chances every single game to put it away, to steal a game, to you know, to, to put away when they've got a big lead, but they just weren't able to. And that speaks to the youth. Uh, that speaks to the Suns just not being in a position to be ready to take this step, you know, to make it to the finals. Um, and it's hard when you have your first playoff run, make it all the way to the finals. You're not necessarily ready. You haven't gone through the experience. You haven't gone through losing really. Uh, although you you've had losing seasons, so all in all, you know, Bucks deserved it. Bucks mm-hmm. came out those last four games and dominated. How often do we see a team go down 0-2 and be able to to win four straight games? The Bucks have been able to do that multiple times in this playoffs. Mm. Um, yeah. So just pure dominance, and then at the end of the day, Giannis took care of business. Giannis led that team. There was talk about Giannis being a Robin to Chris being the Batman, which is pretty much impossible at this point. Um, and then also, um, having, you know, you, but you do give credit to Chris. Chris was oftentimes the closer for this team throughout the whole playoffs. And that's another adjustment that they made, not giving the ball to Giannis in closing moments, but giving it to Chris so he can close, he can shoot from anywhere. He has better offensive tools. Um, and that's what we saw and, and Bucks deserve it. You, yeah. you, you tip, you tip your hat to them. You tip your hat to Giannis. It's very hard to not like Giannis, um, especially during the whole playoffs and especially after the playoffs. Um, and you know, all in all, they deserved it. They were the best team in the in the series. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you though. Uh, I didn't even think the the Bucks came out ready or played well at all. I thought it was all Giannis and Bobby Portis. So I'll mm-hmm. I'll, I'll start with Bobby, and then we'll get into Giannis. What I thought about Giannis, but Bobby Portis that night was spectacular. He had 16 points, six to ten, timely buckets, extending leads, and just big shot after big shot after big play on the defensive end. He was plus six. To Pat Connaughton's minus twenty one off the bench. Pat Connaughton um, just made every wrong play. It seemed like in that yeah, game. yeah, it was yeah. he was zero for four. He didn't really have a good night. Yeah, four threes. So it was whatever. But Bobby Portis got twenty two minutes. I want to say I spoke that into existence. You yeah, that's fair enough. I, I'll give you that. I was preaching this Bobby Portis uh, adjustment for a while. I thought that you know, Brooke was good, but maybe just give Bobby a little bit more. I, I, and I saw the PJ. energy. Give PJ less. Yeah. I like the energy I saw from Bobby. I thought it was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Middleton didn't really come out that great. He Six of 13, great. not bad, but 17 points. Yeah. Um, Drew, Drew Holiday, Holiday, four also. of 19. Yeah. yeah. Weird that Drew Holiday takes 19 to Chris Middleton's 13, but whatever. They won the chip. It's over. Mm-hmm. Still gave you 11 assists. Uh, Brooke Lopez, 10 points. PJ Tucker, nothing. Uh, Pat Connaughton, nothing. Jeff Teague played a minute. So... Really, outside of Giannis, nobody scored more than 20. Nobody yeah. scored more than 17. Mm-hmm. 50 points. 50 points. I saw a guy who was not going to lose. Yeah, that was the attitude. I saw a guy who said, I don't care who's ready to play tonight. 
I'm playing. Who's coming? If Drew's going to help me, if Chris is going to help me, I don't care. I'm here to win, and I'm not going to lose. 20 points in the third quarter. Can we also break down the how he earned his points? Because I'm the, the free throw making that game six was unbelievable. We've never seen. He was in his own. 16 of 17 or something. 17 and 19. 17 of 19, there it is. Um, and he made one three-point shot the whole game. So he got 50 pretty much the old-fashioned way. Yeah. Dominating pa- the paint, making free throws, which we haven't seen him 64% do. 64% from the field. He had 50, 10, and 5 blocks. Um, or 50, 14, and, t- and 5 blocks. Mm-hmm. I think it was the first time ever 50, 10, and 5. Uh, he was fantastic. He was in his zone, wasn't missing free throws, hit 50 points, was not going to lose that game. Yep. That's what it came down to. I thought that, that he just put the ball in his hands and they said he said, take us. Yeah. I don't think that they made any real big plays outside of just giving Giannis the ball. I, I don't think uh, like I don't think the Bucks were that great. Like when you really look at it though, defensively obviously they were I there. They were they're phenomenal, going to be there. D book eight for twenty two. Yeah. Not good enough. DeAndre eight and four of twelve. Bridges three of seven. Cam one of five. Jay Crowder four of eleven. The, the, it, the it was Phoenix just, the Phoenix offense they didn't looked show horrible. Up. Horrible. They even, didn't come to play. Even in past games too, and and that the the, the huge credit goes to the, the Bucks defense because the Bucks defense was was swarming. It was they were big. They played big. They played aggressive. They played tough. Giannis's name needs to be in the two way players of the league amongst the best, if not the best two way player in the league. I don't think we've seen anybody drop fifty and get five blocks and uh, at, at the at the way he's been doing it and, and just be as dominant as he is active. defensively, right? Just active. Like he alters defensive plans. That's right. the thing. Yeah. And one thing I want to point out: the defensive shooting, a uh, three point shooting, was abysmal. But Phoenix shot twenty four percent from the three point line. Yeah. You're facing elimination. You need to go back home for Game Seven. There was no urgency. I felt zero. Uh, Chris Paul played with some urgency. Had twenty six points. Uh, but even then, I mean, like Chris Paul, I found played with too much of a sense of urgency, and I, was, I think I turned over, turned, you, turned over to you in that game. I said, sometimes he's just doing too much, yeah. and it kind of I understand the balance of being forced to do too much because nobody else is doing much, uh, so it gets a lot tougher there. But everyone, everyone other than Chris didn't look like they wanted to be there. Yeah, and I I brought that up, man, on the episode right before the game. I said. A part of me feels that because they're so young and they were up 2-0, now they're down 3-2, they're in Milwaukee. There's mm-hmm. so many things stacked up against these guys yeah. that I feel like they're already – they Checked lost out. the game before they got there. Mm-hmm. And that's what it looked like to me. It looked like a bunch of young guys who didn't have answers. Mm-hmm. And, again, another thing we talked about on, on that same episode was this is not – Chris. it's Chris Paul's time. It's not past theirs. his time anyways, but it, it definitely was his time to win. But it wasn't Phoenix's time to win. Those guys had to go through some growing pains. Yeah. And kudos to them. First player in front, you made the NBA Finals. You were up 2-0. You had a real chance to win a ring. So I expect them to come back stronger and better. Um, We'll talk about their future coming up. But, yeah, that's what I saw. I saw just Giannis. He had the will to win. And everything was just great from hugging his girl and his kid and the post game and talking about his dad and his family and you know, selling stuff on the street, and now he, the whole family's set up. So yeah, it, it was just it, you're happy for the guy. It's yeah. really, like you said, it's hard not to like him. Uh, great work ethic, and and honestly, just happy for the Bucks in Milwaukee. First chip in fifty years. Fifty years exactly. 70, and a couple seventy one to twenty one. A couple a couple interesting facts stats uh, provided by our very own statistician Kiro. Uh, he's SK today, not uh, not PK. Uh, so we've just witnessed something we've never seen before in finals history. Giannis averaged 35, 35, 30, 35 points per game, 13 rebounds, 5 assists, 1.2 steals, 1.8 blocks, all while shooting just under 62% from the field. He's the first player to ever average 30, 10, and 5 on 60% shooting in a final series. And just to give a little kicker there, he did this all on a high bricks and a knee. This, the knee looked good. I don't know. You know, later down this, later down in the series, how hyper extended it really was. He looked healthy as hell I don't, I, if if this wasn't healthy then I don't, i'm scared to see what he will be when he is healthy um but he just wanted it so badly this year um a couple of few extra things first ever 30 10 5 on 60 in percent in the finals first 50 point 10 rebound five block finals game uh first ever 
MIP, MVP, DPOY, and F Finals MVP as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and it's <laughs> freak on the court and in the stat sheets. <laughs> 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 that's fire. Um, I can't get that, that, that. That's credit to Stat Muse. I did not make that, make that up myself. But just dominance in the way he played the whole series, the way he played the whole playoffs, um, really being a leader for the Bucks, And I think that's something he's grown into more and more every single every single season especially you know when you, when you take a look back we everyone loves showing the picture comparisons of him in his rookie season weighing like 110 pounds at 611 whatever he's listed at um just the leadership the way he leads a team the way he commands the team the team doesn't do that well but he takes it upon himself to play on both ends of the floor i don't think we've seen that um from a young superstar and you gotta think i say young superstar because he's, he's only 26 he's got 10 more years to go minimum, mm-hmm. right? So it, it, it's the first time in a long time we've seen this kind of leadership, this kind of energy, this kind of play mm-hmm. from a young superstar. Yeah, a couple more things about Chris Middleton. because So we've heard Giannis' story, but Chris Middleton's story is pretty crazy as well. Second-round pick, played in the D-League, traded after first season, signed a max contract, two-time All-Star champ, led finals and playoffs and clutch points. Mm-hmm. And then to elaborate on the clutch points, he actually had 18 points on 75% shooting. In the clutch, in the finals, yeah, the most by any player, the second closest had four points. Cool. He also led the entire playoffs in clutch points. He so, had his moments where he was just flat out unguardable. He had a case for finals MVP until Giannis, Giannis had 50. Yeah, I agree with that. Giannis I, I, buried it. He took home the, the trophy. But up until that game, mm-hmm. it was really up in the air because Chris had straight won them games Yeah, at the end yeah. of the day. So yeah. shout out to them champions great story they started from the bottom literally mm. uh and now they're here what the, so do you consider are you of the school of thought that Giannis is the best player in the league right now or is everyone just on a high this happens every year high? this happens because every year let's not forget that the bucks were down 2-0 to the to the brooklyn nets when Kyrie got hurt and it was 2-0 in embarrassing fashion so potentially we don't know because they did come back from 2-0 in the finals against Phoenix. Yeah. But it's harder when it's KD and Kyrie. So we don't know. Uh, Is he the best? This, Can this, we say that? This happens every single season. Like the season LeBron won. LeBron's back to being the best. The season whoever won. The Raptors person, won. Kawhi is the Kawhi best is in the, the league. Yeah. Exactly. It happens every single season. The question is always asked every single season. Just because you win a championship, yeah, you are the champion. The, the best team doesn't always win the championship. And I think that's very important. The healthiest team wins. The healthiest team, healthiest and best is a balance of both. That team wins the championship. So going forward, is Giannis the best in the league right now? I wouldn't give him that crown just yet. I think he's, you know, he's knocking on the door. Being the best in the league takes more than just one championship run. You, It takes multiple years of, of success to reach that. Like For the longest time... LeBron was not yet the best in the league, even though he had multiple years of success because he hadn't won. He won the first one. Then we start to say, okay, now he's getting there. He won the second one. Now, okay, it's solidified a bit more that he is the best in the league. He also had Kobe in his way. He had other guys in his way. So to be the best in the league, championships come into, come into play. Multiple years of success come into play. So just because you win one year, I don't think it's safe to crown you the best in the league. Kawhi had won. In Toronto, the next season goes to LA, doesn't doesn't play much. How can we give him the best crown? LeBron wins last year, comes back this season. The team doesn't look as great. LeBron obviously getting older. How can we give him the best crown? So, I'm against giving him the best crown, but I don't think I'm not saying he is the best. I'm also not saying he's not the best. I think it's still up for grabs. Yeah, the league is transitioning into a new younger era now. Um, so in my opinion, he's 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 knocking the door. That's what I'll give him. Look, man, I I think if you break it down from best, because the word best, w- what are we talking about? Are skills. we talking about skills? Are like, we talking right? about leadership? Or well, obviously not leadership, but because I think no questions asked. On, he's the most dominant player in the league. Yes, he's the most dominant player in the league, and I think, and I kept saying this, once he unlocks himself, mm. like I, I was saying, I th- I believe he did unlock himself rather. I believe that once he unlocks himself, which he did, he had back-to-back 40s, he had a 50 in the finals, it's over. I think the next four or five years, are his, pending eh? health, are his. And at this point, why not 
why wouldn't a top player want to go play in, in, in Milwaukee? Milwaukee? Yeah. You just saw Chris Middleton set career record highs and in, in clutch and NBA record highs playing with this guy. Yeah. So clearly you can have the ball, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can do your thing. Mm-hmm. He's not a personality. He's not a big ego. Yeah. We'll see what the championship does to him, but he's built like different, it. truly. Yeah. Yeah. And and honestly, when you really st- when you stem it down, he's just He's not a USA basketball <laughs> guy. Product. Product. He's either. not a product. Not of an a, AAU and, guy. And I don't know what it is about these guys, these European guys, but they're just built different. Yeah. And he had down, and like you hear the stories like um, back when he was a young kid and training in Greece, they picked him up. He started playing. So he, in his post game, he was like, I watched, Gian, I watched LeBron courtside of the finals, and it, it was crazy to me because – when LeBron played in his first finals, mm-hmm. I hadn't even played basketball yet. Yeah. He yeah. started playing basketball in 08. Yeah. LeBron's first final was 07. Yeah. So for him to start in 08, and then they, they were just shaping him, right? So they were like, yo, this kid's not eating good, whatever. So they started giving him um, pamphlets, like uh, per diems, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go go eat this, this. And then one day they come, his, his boy, his manager, sees like the stack of per diems, like a stack of money. He's like, uh, Bro, what what's is up? this? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm, this is money. I'm just keeping it for my family. And he's like, man, it's for you to eat. Like the whole idea is, we need you to get to a certain weight. We need a certain level. He's like, he's like, you're crazy if you think that I'm gonna eat while my family starves. Yeah. And he's just built like that, right? Yeah. The first person he went to see after is his girl. Yeah. And yeah. when you see like her, like even the fact that he's dating this girl, who like you know, Deep Book comes in with the with the Kardashian family, yeah. whatever the Jenner. Yeah. Uh, big shot, you know all these people. Melo's Melo's got Lala, you know all these like big. <laughs> sh- and then Giannis's girl is so simple, you know, like such you have a, no idea who she is. Yeah, just know her name is Mariah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know anything about her, but she's very simple, very like she seems very kind. And whenever he puts like puts her in her videos and stuff, like yeah. So he's just built different. Mm. So why wouldn't you want to go play there? Honestly. No, it, it's definitely a hot spot. And all of them, honestly, when you really look at it, you you look at the free agents they've attracted or. Um, I mean, Drew. I, I don't know if Drew came in a trade or he did. He, he came tra- in a trade. They, 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 they hauled. Did PJ come in a trade or he did came he, in a trade in the in the middle of the year? So they still haven't even attracted any free agents at that point. They're just trading I think for Bobby pieces. Portis. Like it served to the be great of the for them. Year. It, it, but it, he was it, on his couch. He was it, unemployed. It, exactly. It served to be great for them. But yeah, like you said, it, it's definitely no a hot spot. Milwaukee's a tough market, man. But now you're a champion. You're proven. People yeah. just saw what you did. Yeah. And I and I honestly don't th- like when I when I think next year, I don't think they're a shoe in. I think they still they're like they're still a piece to be picked up. It's not a star. I don't think mm-hmm. they need a star by any means. But maybe another piece, a better version of PJ Tucker, a guy who can give you more offense. Yeah. But also be a killer defensively. So it, they still have ways to go, but they can attract talent. It, it's I think. still going to be interesting, just because of like first and foremost, I still honestly do not believe they get ba- they get past the healthy Brooklyn. I that's yeah. my personal. I don't think that they stand a chance. They were down 0-2. They were down two zero or o two, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't think they get past that that trio healthy. So health matters. So can I say they're shooting for the finals next year? I can't. Um, and the league, I mean, obviously we're, we're predicting this based off of the league today. The league can change tomorrow. There's a lot of rumors about people moving, stars moving, um, teams getting better. So I do think Giannis has unlocked a certain level of dominance that he now knows how to not be stopped. Uh, I think Coach Bud also knows how to put him in a situation where this is the best lineup around him to make him excel, which we haven't seen in the last three or four years, uh, which is very dangerous. Um, so it'll be an interesting run for them. He's got what the five-year deal. They've got five more years really with Giannis at the helm, and I think they're going to keep building around him. They've they've shown that they want to invest around him. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're definitely going to be a top tier in the in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. Let's flip it over to the Suns because the Suns have a big summer. Yeah, and, and, and next year, a big couple years. You know, young team making the finals for the first t- first time in, in in a very long time, thirty years. Um, made the playoffs for the first time in, in 10 years, nine years, since 2012 maybe. You have your star point guard now, 36 years old, uh, is a free agent. Well, not really. He could pick up his option. He hasn't declined it yet. There's a possibility that he it's could. It's a $44 million option for one year. So play. from CP's perspective and from the, I mean, not from, really from the Suns perspective, from CP's perspective, does he stay? 
Does he go? What do you think? Well, I think CP's perspective at this point, this is why it's tricky. This is why winning the championship at this point would have been huge, the man. most perfect thing for him because at this point, does CP want to cash in and retire a rich, rich man? Yeah. Or does he want to take some take less money and win somewhere else? Because that's what it comes down to. I don't think a, com- a contending team, a real team that has a real shot at an NBA championship – is going to offer Chris Paul three years. What did you say Kyle Lowry wanted? Three years, $90 million? Three years, $90 let's, million. let's assume that he wants the same. Yeah. Even though he'll command more if that's what Lowry wants. Yeah. But let's say he wants three years, 90 I don't think a contending team is going to give him three years, 90 So if Chris Paul wants to, be, wants to cash in another contract, mm-hmm. then I don't think he can win. So I don't even know. It, what if do you he want? stays in Phoenix, then he's trying to win. I don't know if he's going to stay in Phoenix. Because it's a one-year deal. Who knows what happens at the end of next year if he's going to have another year left he in him. He can decline and, and, and re-sign with Phoenix. I don't think at so. A lower, at a lower so. rate. Because DeAndre Ayton is extension eligible. You're right. You got Mikhail Bridges. You're right. Who's going to command from the league around 20, 20 million a year. 20 million. Yeah. Probably minimum. Mm. Uh, and then that that's a bunch of – you got Cam Johnson in a year or two. It's not going to work. Tough situation, It's a tough situation. And – you already got book making 30, 33.8 next year. DeAndre is going to want the max. So I, to be honest, also if he wants to win, I don't think he stays in Phoenix. I don't think, yes, this was a great year for them. This was a massive overachieving year for them. I don't think they make that deep of a run again next year. I think if they can make a couple moves. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's no doubt if they make, a but not moves. star moves because they need size. What we saw this, we saw they need some size and some offense. They have no they size have at all. Nothing. They have no bigs at all, right? Yeah. So the Back first up. thing you got to go get some bigs. Yeah, yeah. And I think having Jay Crowder and Bridges is a little bit of overkill. Yeah. I think Bridges can do the role that Crowder, Crowder plays. Can, Maybe yeah. get a guy who can score more. Yeah. Generate more because if you have two guys who are predominant defenders, who can give you some offense, but predominantly are defenders. It may be good to you know offset one, mm-hmm. get a guy who just scores a lot and doesn't defend as much, offset it. I don't know. I'm not an NBA coach, but I think there's some moves for Phoenix to make for sure. But I don't see why they wouldn't come back next year and and be be right there. There's a lot of teams in the West, and there's a lot of teams that I think underachieved heavily, and whether but it's due to health, whether due to whatever. The future of the Clippers is weird. The future, future of the, the Clippers, Blazers I'm, is weird. The Nuggets are – is Jamal Murray going to be who he is after a torn ACL? We don't know. Um, How long is Golden State take? makes move. Golden State the play, hasn't played a game in three years. Draymond Green is donkey. The Lakers, they <laughs> make moves. Who knows? I don't – I st- – I, I disrespected that, Draymond Green. I didn't feel good about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's definitely a great, he's annoying star player. He's annoying, but 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 I don't I don't see the hype of or putting people putting the Warriors as contenders. I just Clay hasn't played a game in two years. I'm not putting them as contenders until they get that fourth piece, and they're looking extremely hard to get a fourth piece compared uh, uh, based off of the the reports and the rumors that are being leaked and yeah, whatever. So the West is really not that great, and Phoenix was second in the West. Utah. Utah will always uh, regular Utah's season. Utah's just capped season. unless they also make a big move like a Bradley Beal or like a. There's gonna be. They need a Bradley. There's gonna be like movement. Lonzo Ball would be nice because I don't. Mike Conley, yeah. like, thanks. Mike Conley didn't do much in the. It didn't do well for them in the playoffs. It sucked. But yeah. Gobert is a is a is a is a tough piece to have at the five because he he's limited offensively. Yeah. Even even from like a pick and roll situation, he doesn't have like Da dominated him and. Just despite having better hands and being better, 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 better awareness offensively, um, I don't know. It, it's gonna it's it's gonna be an, a summer that's very up in the air. A lot of moves going on this summer, which we'll you know we'll keep track of and we'll 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 recap as we go. Um, but let's kind of get get into that free agency. Mm-hmm. Um, we you mentioned it earlier. A report just came out today. Kyle Lowry, the Groat, the Groat is hungry for some more money. He wants a three year. Ninety million dollar deal. Um, there's also been rumors about Kyle Lowry, Demar Derozan interested in joining the Lakers, which I w- honestly I would love that. That'd be pretty cool. Ain't no way he's getting three um, years, ninety million if that's what he wants. I'm with you there. Um, also, yeah, three year, ninety million for a 36, 37 year old point guard. You're selfish. Who's putting his body on the line? You weren't constantly. even an All Star last year. I didn't. I just didn't know. You didn't he make the playoffs last year. It's a, 
it's very tough for a lot of people are saying money I mean, actually i saw a lot of different reactions on twitter people saying money well spent or every penny's worth it people saying yo dude this guy's 37 age plays a factor you're not signing this guy for one year i'm probably i'm sure I, I, I don't think he can give you 30 million dollars next year he can maybe give you a 25 million dollar kind of performance next year but even if he gives you 30 next even year, there's still 60 there's more. There's still 60 more. And the issue is those two latter years, how, what is he going to produce for you? What is he going to do for you, especially if you're a championship contender? Um, and if you're the Raptors, you drafted Malachi Flynn. You have Fred Van Vliet. Like, you have the chance right now to grab a Suggs. Like, why is Lowry even in and, the picture? And, 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 and it's not only that. Lowry promised to consider a signing trade. You're so by generous. doing this, you're you're putting you're putting extra money on the books for for no, the, the the pieces you get in return for this trade better be amazing future pieces, or else you're putting this money on the books for just to, to honor a guy, just to honor you know giving hey thank you for you, the help you've done the last whatever many years. Like three years, we've been giving him thirty million dollar deals, constantly for the last four or five years. It's been thirty million plus dollar deals. I don't think the market for him is thirty. Is three years ninety? If he wants, he can sign a one year thirty, or but it's just it's he can too probably high. get a two year. He he might actually get a three year ninety, but he's not gonna win. That's it what depends I'm saying. where. You're, it you're depends not gonna get where. a three year ninety, yeah. and, and and also go to the Lakers with your boy Demar. Like what? yeah, they they pay LeBron, they pay AD, they pay KCP. They also have to pay Larry. Oh, they gotta pay Demar too, buddy. Like money doesn't just grow on trees. Yeah. Well, it could in L.A., but, I mean, there's still a cap, right? You, yeah. you can't really spend all the money. So, a very interesting, selfish move. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. People are going to color me a hater. Color me a hater. I don't care. Uh, Larry asking three years, 90 mil is a joke. Yeah. It's laughable. If you give him three years, 90 mil, you're not in a position to compete. You're not trying to win. And I feel like someone's going to give him three years, 90. He might get a ring, and I'm going to come back and If he does that, that would be these very impressive. Back. But it's not likely, in my opinion, just, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, and then there's, like, reports of the dra- uh, the Raptors wanting to move up in the draft to number three. Yeah. Uh, because they're kind of at a in a weird spot right now because the top three are, like, really good. Mm-hmm. And then, like, after that, it's, like, a bit of a we don't know what there. we want. Yeah, like, there's a little bit of a drop-off. But they're looking at a guy called Scotty Barnes, who apparently is a good defender, um, long, long wing player. I would prefer more a wing player than yeah. a small guard. Yes, apparently have Suggs has some um, some height. But he's like six three to six four, which is not bad. But mm. I would prefer a wing guy. Um, yep. So we'll see. The draft is Thursday night. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see what it, what they end up doing if they trade it, if they keep it. I'm excited to see. I mean, if they can't move up to three, do you find value in keeping that four? Like I, I feel like there's it, they don't really look like they want or are impressed with a fourth a fourth pick or that or that number four option. Why not try? If you can't trade up, get some other assets another way. Trade down for to, for a guy that you know. I'm sure the recruiting, the scout, the, the the scouting is there. Like the Raptors always find guys kind of diamonds in the rough, and they are are always able to produce them. I think it's also a valid option to trade down in the draft and get an asset that's already in the league or or or, or somebody who's already established in the league. Um, but that's going to be an excited night. Exciting night. Sorry. Lastly, you thought basketball was over. It's just you, getting started again. You thought buddy. the Olympics have begun. The Tokyo 2020 Olympics have, have begun. Um, the tournament has started for the men's basketball. A um, couple of very interesting games that already took place. Uh, France, Argentina, Slovenia, Australia, Italy. U.S. Um, U.S. have already played. Um, surprising loss from the USA versus Is France Is it a game. surprise, though? It hasn't been a surprise Maybe the, an on paper surprise. On paper surprise. Unexpected. On it, it, I mean, it's been expected. You know, when you compare it to how they were playing in the exhibition games, the, the team just doesn't look like they're they're meshing well. They're gelling well together. Um, also, uh, I've said this a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week. This is not the best USA team, USA product we've seen in a while. Um, to throw out a few names that are missing from this team, LeBron James. AD due to injury, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson due to injury, James Harden, James Harden Paul due to George. injury, Kyrie Irving, Paul George, Kawhi, Kawhi who I don't think has ever played for Team USA because he just hates everything. Um, so those are just that's a full roster right there that we just named that aren't playing. 
Um, and it just doesn't seem Kyrie. like it fits. Yeah, we, yeah, we mentioned Kyrie. Um, Jimmy Butler, for example, as well. Um, but they lost to France, 83-76. Uh, Evan Fournier gave him a 28-piece. I love international basketball is much different from NBA basketball. Mm-hmm. And although USA Team USA has been dominant in the in recent years, um, I, I, uh, it's because they've had their best product out there on the court. This year they don't, um, and it's almost like an awkward team this year. You really go look, you look down the roster. Draymond Green, Bam Adebayo, Zach Levine, Damian Lillard, Kevin Durant. Uh, Jason Tatum, Chris Middleton, JaVale McGee, uh, Devin Booker, yeah, Drew Holiday, Jeremy Grant. <coughs> Calvin it's Johnson. just like it's like a mix of like here's some top ten guys, here's some guys who are maybe top twenty, and here's some guy who are maybe top fifty, and go ahead and go play together. Um, and interesting it's not, that, has not formed uh, well for them. Interesting that Chris Middleton got five minutes. Hey, he's on it. He's, uh, he's he's probably still drunk from the championship parade. Probably still kind of. No, uh, you know what, man? <laughs> Pop's catching a lot of criticism. So in their last, they're eight, losing, brother. In their last eight international games, I think prior to that they hadn't lost ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, since uh, 04 or something, something wild like that. that. Yeah. In their last eight, they're three and five. They're three and five since they, since he took over the team. Yeah. Uh, people are saying he's trying to turn this into the Spurs 2.0. It's not working. He's, you know, not giving out good minutes. The team, like, I don't understand the construction of this team as well. Like, your center is Bam and your forward is Draymond. Like, what are you talking about? It's kind of weird, man. But the construction um, team is just not, it's yeah, not and, and, and at I all, think, man. I think we talked about it here a little bit, but FIBA basketball, man, like, there's no defense of three seconds. And you can goal yep. So Rudy Gobert is a gem. Yeah. And France won the last World Cup in 2019. They beat the States. So yeah. this isn't the first time. This is not a surprise. A lot of people just need to understand that the world is further ahead now than they ever were. It's like Kobe said, right? And there's right now four or five countries. Like between – like Slovenia, Luka is good enough – To carry. To honestly carry them to a gold. Mm-hmm. What he did to Argentina, we'll talk about that. But yeah. Argentina is another good team. Uh, what, Australia, uh, is, Australia a big, is a really Spain good team. Spain is a big team. Spain, Italy France. is pretty solid. So like, these are really solid countries, solid teams, and you can't sleep. Nigeria on yeah, the come up. Yeah, you can't sleep. So, uh, I mean, look, if the states lose one more game, it's over. Yeah. Right now, it's looking really, yeah. You know, like now, your back's against the wall because it's group play. You can't really lose two games of right. three. Uh, I don't think they're gonna lose in the groups. That'll be monumental, but. Um, what can I say, man? Kevin Durant just can't lead a team. Ah, like, come I on! I have to say, it. I man. have to drop it in there. You, this come is on! He's not a leader. How do you? How, he had a wide open shot in the last Ooh, minute of that yeah. game. Brick. They had three wide open shots as a team. Kevin Durant is not a leader. You think LeBron would allow this to happen? You think Kobe would allow this to happen? Yeah, definitely not. In the, I'm in with the that. group stages, he he just doesn't have that same they lost that same two leadership games in the last week. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not good for them. I and guess then, two different countries. And, 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 oh no, they lost three. They, did they lose to Australia too? No, they beat Australia. They beat Australia. They, they lost slapped Nigeria. Australia after that that loss, right? They lost Nigeria. Um, Kevin Durant. Some 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 positive news. He's 18 points away from being the all-time Team USA leader in points. Killed it yesterday. Ten, Going to ten surpass. points. <laughs> yeah, yo, Col- you know, you know, like Carmelo is an all-time leader and averages like 10.2 points a game for Team USA. Bro, so if, I, you, Evan you Fournier is gonna get. Yo, eight, Drew Holiday had thing. 18 points off the bench. Drew Holiday shot five of Brother, 13. That's the thing about international basketball. For some reason, these teams will have one guy just dominate, and they'll. You know, we talk about international. Evan Fournier had 28. We flip over to Australia and Nigeria. Australia took that game 84 to 70, 67. Patty Mills, 25 points all night. 25 Off points. Off this guy is an international killer. You go to Spain versus Japan. Spain took that game 88 to 77. Ricky Rubio with a team high 20 points. We flip over to Slovenia versus Argentina. Slovenia slaps them by 118 to 100. Luka, Luka Doncic, Doncic. He's the best in the world. In his first he's the best ever in the Olympic game, scores 48 points. 11 um, rebounds, 5 assists. Second highest in Olympics history. He missed 11 shots of, um, of 29. Yeah, he took pretty much all the shots on his team. Um, but he's got that. He's able to carry that team. He's done it all for the last three seasons with Dallas. Obviously, they hit 16 threes that game. 37%. Shooters. Those guys were shooters. launching it, bro. Um, Italy also takes uh, their first game against Germany, 92-82. 
Um, Italy, uh, ooh, M. Low. Sorry, the Germans don't really have any NBA players at this point anymore. I mean, other than uh, Mo Wagner and uh, um, Maxi Kleba, no. Maxi, 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 Maxi is not on the team. Um, but this guy named M. Lowes drops 24, team high for Germany. Um, and then you've got Italy with... Uh, Marco Bellinelli? Bellinelli, see who they got. Gallinari with a team high, or actually second highest, uh, 18 points. They've also got this guy named uh, Fontecchio. Fontecchio. Yeah. Something like that, 20 So you're points. telling me all these dudes, you're telling me Ricky Rubio can manage to get 20 points. It's a different Kevin story Durant. It's a different story Kevin here. Durant, you can't score more than 10? Give me 15. No, no, no. That's a different story because Team USA has too many stars for you to take that many shots. I, but he also went 4 of 12. He went 4 of 12, which is abysmal. It went bro, 4 of 12. the most of it. Lillard, 3 of 10, 11 points, bro. Yeah, Drew Holiday played the greatest for that team. He had 5 of 13, 5 of 13. By the way. Tatum, 3 they, of 9, 9 points. They just Dude. didn't play. They don't play well together. It, it's just that simple. Um, Kevin, there's no continuity. There's no... You know what it is? Another big thing there, too. You know what it I is? I love that you mentioned that. One of the most important things in basketball and a basketball team is a role player. You cannot have a good team without role players. Yes. yes. There is yes. not one role player on that team outside of Draymond Green. And every it's, it's, single one of those guys is the number one option on their NBA team. Yeah. They're an all-star. Let's go through it. Uh, other than Draymond Green. Bam Adebayo, all-star. Zach Levine, all-star. Dame Lillard, superstar, all-star. Durant, superstar, all-star. Keldon Johnson, role player. Played nine minutes. Not really, whatever. Not really involved. Jason Tatum, all-star. Best player on his team. Chris Middleton, all-star, champion. JaVale McGee, two minutes. Devin Booker, all-star. Finals. Drew Holiday, all-star, champion. Jeremy Green, MIP, all-star. Yeah. Not a single one of those guys is a role player. That Not one of those rotation guys is a role player. You can't win against teams that have continuity and roles. If you don't know your role, continuity is. continuity is the biggest thing. Probably role playing is is huge for sure. If you can't, you know, Kobe came in when he when he when he when they had that twenty two thousand eight team, I believe it was. Kobe's like, I'm playing defense. I'm not taking a single shot. I'm just gonna defend. And that's sacrifice. That's you know the 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 the, the most talented player on the team saying, I'm gonna take this role. I'm defining my role. This is what I'm gonna do. Or when they lean on Melo. Exactly. When they lean on Melo. On, on Melo. It comes down to coaching, and continuity also plays a big part. You look at these teams. Pau Gasol is playing in his fifth Olympics. Our, uh, Luis Scola from Argentina is playing in his fifth Olympics. These guys have been together for the last 15, 20 years. New guys come in for sure. Older guys come out. But they stay, and they play international Olympic basketball for their whole career. Team USA guys, they they flow in and out. Hey, this year I want to play. This year I don't want to play. This year I want to work on my game. This year I don't. I'll come, I'll come play. So... Continuity is also a big thing, and I think Team USA right now, they're relying too much on their name, their brand. Like, hey, we can beat these guys one on one. But Evan Fournier after the game says they can beat us one on one. They're a talented team, but as a team, they can't beat us. And you saw that, and you see that single handedly. Mm-hmm. As a team, basketball is a team game. If you don't have role players, you don't have guys who are willing to do different things, and you all shoot poorly, it's not going to work out mm-hmm. for you. Yeah, like I want to look at Australia for a second. Aaron Baines. Role player, Thibel, role player, Del Vadova, role player, Patty Mills, role player, Joe Ingles, role player. Intelligent guys. And these are, when they get to this level, they know that they're the best on this team. Exactly. It's a huge so difference. everyone else knows when to step up. They also know when to rely on each other because yeah. they're role players. They play off of other players. So, mm-hmm. look, I'm not saying look, that my argument is definitely flawed in the sense that the U.S. continually releases teams without role players. Mm hmm. But they win. These this year, it doesn't look like these guys know how to play. The rules aren't other defined. Than, other than what they have, right? Yeah. And and yeah, maybe it is a coaching thing. Maybe it's a communication thing. But uh, I don't know. They have their backs up against the wall. Mm. Who's your prediction for gold for the men's basketball bracket? Are you still gonna go United Team States, USA. or do you think that because uh, France is is the World Cup uh, reigning World Cup champ? So France is good, man. France has players. They've got good guys They've on got their size, team. Players. Um. I'm gonna honestly go Australia. I think Australia's got you know some some really good talent. They've got scores. Uh, they've got bigs. Um, you know, Team USA playing the way like they're playing. Uh, I don't think, you know, I don't think being beating Team USA is a big deal this year just because of the product they've put out. They just don't play well. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're allowing Evan Fournier to give you 28, 
Um, nobody wants to guard him. No one wants to pick him up. Then Day after that's the just, game. That's These guys attitude. are so different in their countries. <laughs> Get out of here. No, you're different, buddy. Um, yeah, actually, though. Um, nine points. Exactly. Um, so I'm going to go. France is a very good option. I'm going to go Australia. I think they've got a really good team, and they, yeah. they, they've had a really good team for a long time. Yeah, this was my pre-Olympics pick. I'm going to oh, crack my back. Right. Oh, This is my pre-Olympics pick. I'm going to continue to ride with my guy, Slovenia for gold. Yeah, that would be for huge. Gold. Wow. I, I said it, honestly, as a joke in the beginning. Then I saw him manhandle one of the best teams in the world, one of the best countries in the world yeah. by himself. Uh, so pending health, I'm going to go Slovenia for gold, my guy, Luca. That's it. Uh, I think when he plays internationally, he knows he cooks. He knows it's his, everyone it's knows team. who he is. He's the Eurobasket god. So yeah. uh, it is what it is. Um, shout out to... Man, shout out to you and to PK for the NBA season. I know yeah, it's it was, uh, fun. It was, it was fun. a nice long NBA season. I felt like two seasons morphed into one. Yeah, because of uh, the short off season. But uh, we're excited to take some time, watch some Olympic basketball. Hopefully, mm-hmm. get some cool guests on, mm-hmm. uh, and then just spend some time in the off season, get ready for the next year. We got yeah. the draft coming up next week. Exactly. Uh, free we got season free agency huge. season. Uh, oh man, it's gonna be exciting. So, uh, you know where to find us: Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. Facebook, wherever you like pictures and send DMs, you can find us. We're brought to you by the Balls Life Podcast Network, and we will come at you next week. Peace.